Clinton and Maddie P. Good to see you guys. If you guys, hey, real quick here, if you guys can turn on your cameras, please feel free to do so. I, I think it's great to actually have more interaction with you guys visually than anything, or turn on your mics or whatever you can do. That's one of the things we're working on at the school is trying to have more interaction, especially in this COVID. Hey, there you go. Devin, I get to see, hello, Devin. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing okay. <laughs> okay, you doing good? You enjoying the quarantine? Uh, I can't say I'm enjoying it, but <laughs> I mean, getting stuff done. Yeah, so. no, I know. Yeah, I'm getting the quarantine 40, but no, it's good. Well, <laughs> Quentin, well, thanks for showing up, Devin, and Quentin and Maddie. If you can jump in, that'd be great too. But yeah, so for those of you guys for the official video, and for those of you that may not have been here yesterday, but I think you all were here. So my name is uh, Matthew Powers. I'm a professor in the Media Arts and Science uh, program, which is part of the HCC department, which is part of, <laughs> which is part of IUPUI Informatics, uh, the School of, uh, sorry, the School of Informatics and Computing. It's quite a lot of letters there. We abbreviate it. It still goes on forever. But uh, no, I've been here since 2007. And as you guys know from yesterday or maybe other things, I teach primarily the video games, uh, sequential storytelling, a bunch of history, paper prototyping, all that stuff. And then like today, one of my absolute favorite classes, of course, because this is what got me into everything, is creature design. And I don't say monster because I think that has too many uh, connotations behind it, but I do aliens, creatures, uh, beings, entities, things like that. And this has been a, this was a really interesting class to get off the, to get on the books, like I was telling Taylor. This is an applied theory class. So instead of going through a syllabus and being like, boom, 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 boom. Hello, Al Madden. Hello, Madden. Good to see you. Um, we actually, I will present scenarios and students will come in with their skills, 2D, 3D, uh, 4D, sound, you know, like I said, we had a programmer, we have a sound person, and I will present scenarios and then they have to make a non-humanoid creature that has personality and culture and has so much good explanation. Oh, it's Angela. Hi, Angela. Sorry. It was, uh, it was a little abbreviation there. So they will then apply it. So you come in with your strength. This is why it's a 300 and 400 level class. So you've had two years to work on your strength. And then I really challenge you to really apply those like in the industry, like in the industry, I'll give you an example. One of the games of Just Cause, Just Cause. Yeah, uh, Devin, do you know Just Cause, the series? Um, yeah, I've heard of it. You've heard of it, yeah. So every, every, every game takes place in a different world and time. And one of the teams on there was given the prerogative, this level, level five, takes place on a boat. And they said, well, what type of boat is it? What's going on? What's happening? And the art director said, we don't have time. Put it on a boat. So they were left literally in the high seas. So they had to design their own boat, their own. And it was great because they, they had no direction, but they were able to use their skills to make a level, which is very fun, where the boat rocks back and forth, the boxes go back and forth, the waves crash. And then, you know, some companies will tell you exactly what to do, but a lot of companies will be like, okay, we need an alien, we need a creature, we need a, an enemy, we need a hero that is going to be X, Y, and Z. And then you have to be able, oh, hey, hello, Maddie. Hello, good to see you, nice background. Looks like a lot of cats and fruit. Very nice, very good. As you guys can see, this is my natural environment. I'm above the earth right now. But no, so this class really challenges you guys. And the thing that we wanna do in this class is we wanna have one foot in facts. So we study a lot of bizarre things on this planet. And then we try to take that and extrapolate it into fantasy. And then we go into like, you know, terrestrial aliens and then like spiritual or interdimensional. And the main thing is that in the class, you guys have created something that nobody has seen before, but also something that you're emotionally invested in. Because the thing that I tell kids is I'm like, look guys, if you wouldn't buy this thing in the store, then you need to redo it. That's the big thing. You know what I mean? Like if you're not going to buy your own work, if you're not going to buy your own toy, plushy, sound, program, game, you got to jump back in and try to redo it because you got to be, you got to be your own audience first. Because if you don't love what you do, then how do you expect anybody else to love it? You know what I mean? So it's not selfish, but it's a good base to be like, I love this. I love this thing. And then I can sell it and put it out there. Does that make sense to everybody? Those got visuals. So, and I just love this class because again, it just leads to new and bizarre and wonderful things. And people are hungry for it. I mean, look at one of the things that Marvel took a big risk on was Guardians of the Galaxy. Because they didn't think that, you know, one human and then Gamora and, and Strax, always get his name. And then, of course, Rocket Raccoon and Groot. They didn't think it was going to work. They did it all as a flute. And now they're some of the most popular characters. You know, and everybody loves Koopas and Goombas and Metroids and Octoroks and things like that, right? Do you guys have any favorite aliens, creatures, things? I mean, what do you guys got? Anything? 
as they ponder, Maddie and Devin look deep in thought. Quinton is nodding. Are there any creatures or animals or anything that you guys are really drawn to from the movies or the zoo or anything like that? Pokemon, Maddie, a Poke yeah, see, like I said, we do a whole day of Pokemon. You know, like, um, I'll give you an example. I can talk about this here in a little bit, but you know the, uh, you know the, uh, the Pokemon, the ghost Pokemon, Shuppet? You know, the Shuppet little ghost one? That is actually a really popular Pokemon, and that is based off of a Japanese, they do, they make these little, they take white cloth, and they will, like, make a little, they'll wrap it around and make a little face, and it looks like a little ghost, and they're called Toro Toro Buzos, and they're called Shine Monks. So that what we think is just a simple ghost Pokemon is actually based on a really deep set Japanese tradition. And you know how we say rain, rain, go again, go away, come again another day. When it starts raining in Japan, children and adults will make these little shine monks, tie them to a string and then tie them across the thing. And that inspired Pokemon. And then what, what, what Shepard turns into, which is a bonnet, actually looks like a toy, and that's a Tsukumogami. And the Japanese believe that when you deal with an object, like a sandal or an umbrella or, you know, a loot or something, you put your energy into it. So if you treat your sandals well, they will have good energy. If you treat your sandals bad, they will have bad energy. And then when you're done with your objects, you, you, they, they take on that energy. And so there's a lot of myth and mythos and so that myth and mythos then created Bennett because Bennett's Pokemon entry is this was a toy abandoned by children and now it's, you know, it's coming after people and that's why it's ghosts. Does that make sense? Is that too weird for you guys? I mean, and that's the thing. And then they have, then they just come up with random things randomly just to be cool and actually engaging. So that's what we look at. We look at this kind of fun stuff. We look at what other people do industry wise because the other big thing about this is that for you guys to make stuff that gets people's attention. You know, like I said, one of the things I'm going to show you is a student named Melissa Caplione, and she made a creature, and it was so weird and so unique and so relatable, though, that she put it out there, and she got a job for a long time. Now she's doing independent comics, where she got to go to Britain and illustrate children's novels based on the creature in the class, and I'm not trying to like a brag, but that's the point, is that you make stuff in the class that's portfolio worthy, and then you try to get, you know, an industry job from it, and we've had people, oh, hey, Quentin, good to see you. All right, I good to have see a face. <laughs> Yes, you have a face. Very nice. Good. See, this is what we, we got to interact with each other, especially nowadays. So good to see you. Keep nodding. Just keep nodding the whole time. Just keep nodding. No, it's good. Okay, stop. Don't break your neck. But I mean, that's the thing is that she made this weird thing. It was interesting. It was engaging. And then she got a job from it. You know what I mean? So that's what I want to tell you guys about real quick. So, hey, any questions, comments off the, uh, the back? Oh, one thing I'll say real quick is that then a lot of students will bring in stuff from previous work to high school and previous classes. They'll really polish it in the creature classes, you know, summer and spring, and then they'll go off and use it for capstone, independent study, or they'll make creatures for a game or a movie or sound or whatever. So I know of a student right now whose entire sound project is going to be taking people's creatures from the class and then making their mating calls, their, their grunting noises, the sound of eggs hatching, because she wants to get into sound effects. And what better way to make sound effects than take a bunch of other people's creatures like you would in the industry and then add sound work to it. Sorry, I get a little excited about creatures. I have creatures all over this desk. You can't see it, but I have creatures all over this desk right now. So anyway, so do uh, you guys want to see some things here real quick? So first up, I just yeah. want to show you. Some, I just want to show you some things that I show people in the class. Uh, one of the first things is uh, that I show people. We want to create a sense of awe and excitement and engagement. So one of the things, have you guys now? The movie's not so happy, but there is a movie called The Mist. And it's based on the book by Stephen King. And it's about basically the army opens up an interdimensional portal. All this mist comes through and an entire ecosystem comes through and starts terrorizing people. And we really want to look at ways that people can do, create things that are fantastical, but also believable at the same time. So this is the first clip I show in my creature class because this is two things. One, it's a really bizarre giant creature. And then two, the keep people in the truck. That's what you want to do for your audience, right? Does that make sense? So let me switch over, let me share my screen, and then I'll show you guys this. So again, sorry, uh, Angela and Taylor, there's a few, we got a few movies today. I got to show a few movies, and then I'll show you guys some examples. And we're sharing, okay, do you see this thing here, guys? You see that? So here's the last scene in the movie where the people are trying to escape from the uh, really deadly creatures. And then here's this really great giant creature that moves across the screen. So I tell students, this is what we're aiming for. And it's okay if you've never done creatures, but that's why we try to do what we got. So here, watch this for just a second. 
That's your audience right there. Look at this thing. And you can't see it, but there's little creatures flying in between the tentacles. So it's a giant walking ecosystem. Look at that. <laughs> now, I don't know about you guys, but I would love to see that in real life. Since we're killing off all the megafauna, we need more megafauna <laughs> on this planet. Look at that thing. Oh yeah, my God, that's, that's so awesome. cool. Yeah, look, 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 you got a hexapolo creature with secondary tentacles. You've got creatures feeding <laughs> off it, and we can't even see the whole thing because of the mist. And look at them. Look, they're like, what the hell was that? A typical who's your phrase. So anyway, so there's that. And then the other thing, let me stop sharing here too. Now, again, we don't have to look at really strange things. There's beautiful things on this planet. Have you guys ever seen a nudibranch? No. Have you guys ever seen a nudibranch? Okay, now nudibranches, for those that don't know that may be watching this video, are little tiny like uh, sea slugs. They breathe out of a series of feathery tentacles out the back of them, and they're actually the inspiration. Maddie, you want Pokemon? You know, Shellos, the West and East versions, those are all based on nudibranches. So again, like I said, I do this whole Pokemon. We do a whole two and a half hours of Pokemon and look at what's going on naturally. Like, you know, Magikarp is based on a giant orange fish called the rockfish. I mean, it looks like a giant thing. And then Mudkip and Whooper are both based on the Mexican axolotl. They're both based on that. So, but see, I always tell my, my students, like, guys, you don't have to look very far. This is a giant, uh, this is a nudibranch, it's a type of sea, sea slug. This is one of them that they recently discovered a couple of years ago. This creature has, uh, yeah, it has 12 legs and it eats by filtering out the sand. So I try to inspire you guys with some amazing stuff. So watch this, guys. I just want you to know, seriously, right now, as we're sitting in Indiana, this thing is in the ocean doing this thing with its giant face. So this is, what, this is what's going on on your planet. Here, enjoy. Okay. Can everybody see this thing, right? Look at that. What do you think? Anybody? What do you, see, what do you think this thing's going to do? By the way, it's missing one of its legs. What do you guys think this is? Uh, Quentin, anybody? What do you think this thing's going to do? It, it looks like it would skitter. Skitter, okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, it's good. That's okay. That's okay to be okay. Maddie, Devin, what do you guys think this thing's going to do? This is what we do in class. We're like, what do you see? What do you think it would do? And how would you do it? You know what I mean? Uh, I think it's kind of got like those legs. So it might do kind of like a, like float up in the ocean. You know, like, do like some <laughs> jellyfish movements, waving it out. Those are good grades. Yeah, so we got a skittering and we got a whoop, whoop, whoop. Maddie, anything on your end? And I can't see your chat. So, Taylor, if you say something on the chat, <laughs> Maddie's giving me a, I, I don't know. Okay. Well, watch this. You guys will be shocked. I love, okay, watch this. Again, they just discovered this a few years ago. Here we go. Watch its face. Look, look at it. Right? See? Normal head. Oh, dear God. It takes in the sand and filters out all the little microscopic creatures and then spits it out. Look at that thing. Would you like to eat like that? Would you like to put your go to Golden Corral and put your face over the entire thing and eat up the whole <laughs> buffet? Look at that. Have you guys wow. ever seen anything like that? Sea creatures are something else. Oh, I know. They're amazing. Well, they're not confined by the weight of gravity or air, so they can just be whatever they want to be. I mean, right. yes, the face. Some people thought that was the back end of the creature. It's not. That's actually <laughs> the face. Okay? That is the face. Look, see, he's chewing, or they are chewing. See how he's spitting it out? No way, this only lasts about two minutes. But look, look how far that head stretches. I mean, that is a net face. Do you see the little feelers? So that's what I tell my students. I'm like, okay, guys, let's see what you can design. There's nothing too preposterous out there. So we have students that will do 2D drawings, paintings, 3D modeling, 3D clay sculptures. And it's up to you guys. As long as you can do the visuals, or, you know, if you're a storyteller, if you can do the extra writing, if you can do the visuals and the writing and make us believe just for a second that this thing exists, then you've done your job. Because people nowadays, when you guys deal with your culture, right, when you deal with the things you love, your IPs, okay, I'll see, this is almost over. I'll just, uh, one more, there we go, there we go. I mean, people want to be immersed, right? People want to be immersed with characters hi hi lynn or illin hi guys meow meow to you too 
Um, you guys, when you watch, I mean, do you guys have any favorite shows or TV shows? And if you do, do you want to be immersed in them or do you just want like service information? I like to be immersed, definitely. I want to feel like I could imagine what I would do in that world. Oh, so you know, that, see, right, wow, see, Quentin, very nice. What could you do if a show is immersive enough, if characters and creatures are immersive enough, you can pretend and actually place yourself you know, serendipitously inside that scene. And then you get a more, you get a greater response, which means you're more invested in the show, which means you'll be more, you'll be more watching it. And I'm not trying to be crass, but you'll put more time and energy and money and, you know, gusto and energy into it. I mean, do you have a favorite one at all or anything or series or show like Umbrella Academy or something like that? Or uh, um, <laughs> I don't watch a lot of shows. <laughs> I'm okay. too busy working on my own thing, actually. Well, okay. Well, what's your own thing? Then what are you working on your own thing? Um, uh, mine, it, it's, um, a sort of sci-fi comedy musical mashup. And oh, wow. it's, uh, okay. yeah, <laughs> it's got, um, two different, uh, alien races in their book, uh, like, uh, sapient and one's like reptilian and the other is like based on the grays. Um, so it's, it's mostly comedy and lighthearted, not super, uh, scientific or anything, but. Well, okay. Now that sounds awesome. I've not heard that kind of mashup before, honestly, or at least recently. And I mean, <laughs> what do you, are you hoping, have you worked on that? Have you been working on it for a while? I mean, what, what do you want to do with it? And how, what's the final product? What do you want to walk away with? That's the important thing. Uh, yeah, I've been working on this thing for like five and a half years and it's my biggest passion project. And, uh, the end goal is basically like a, a animated web series is wow. what I want it to be. Yeah. See, well, again, well then don't let anything stand your way. And that's why, again, it sounds like I'm towing the company line, but you know, with college, if you come in, if you come to my class or most professors are open to this, if you come to my class and you say, Hey, powers, I got this thing working for five years. I like to polish it. Now you won't be able to do it in every class, but in creature class, you could use the class to then really flesh out your creatures, get a critique. You could go to a sound class and work on the musical. You go to John King's storyboard class and get your storyboard. And then you can turn the whole darn thing into a capstone and you can get some people, <laughs> maybe Maddie and Devin can work on it. I'm teasing, you know, but I mean, you guys can form a team and then you walk out of here. I bet well, there was a guy named Aaron Tallman who was obsessed with a dinosaur called Frank. So what he did over three years is in my comic book class, he made, com he made two comics about Frank the dinosaur and his whole world. And he was, you know, he's a gruff, kind of crazy guy, smokes a cigar, unibrow, you know, just bah, you know, and his whole world. And then he turned it into a series of flash video games. He turned it into a website. He turned it into a bunch of 3D models. He did cardboard cutouts. And then he got a tattoo of Frank on his arm. And then at Capstone, he took over the second floor alcove and had this entire thing of Frank. And the, he got a job doing graphic design and character work in Seattle. Why? Because one, he showed the employers that he could work on an IP for more than five minutes. He worked on it for three years. He explored different avenues. And I don't know if I lost touch. He was still working on Frank personally, but then professionally he was working on all these different things and stuff like that. So if you've been doing this for five years, Quentin, great job. That's what employers want to see is that you, because again, you know, look at Pixar movies. You go to Pixar movies and there's a whole section of all the babies that were born during the production. Okay. So that means there was conception and growth and birth in the four or five years. And that's one thing I try to teach my students is, uh, you know, the long-term endurance of doing this, you know, the gestation, you guys are just about to start this whole thing. So, and now you might change your mind eight ways to Sunday, but if you have some direction, you can change back and forth. I had a student one time named Cody LeBeau, who was in my game class and he had done all the basic stuff, but he got up in the middle of the, the, the second class, shook my hand and said, Hey, I love you. I love the class, but I can't do this. And he left and he quit the class. And I was all hurt and what's going on. But what happened was, is that he had learned in the first two years that he wanted to do games, but then he didn't see himself doing it every day for eight hours, but he did find that he could do sound every day for eight or 10 hours. So he switched to the soundtrack, uh, the sound track, sorry, no pun intended. And then his capstone was a, he had made his own podcast where he talked about gaming. So he learned sound and Foley work and podcasting. And so he talked about games, but he combined his love as gaming and sound. And now he's working on sound stuff here in Indianapolis, sound effects, recording, things like that. You know what I mean? So anyway, okay, enough chitter chatter. All right, we'll get going on that. Now, oh, sorry, he's still eating stuff over here. Now, what I wanted to show you guys here too, real quick, is uh, one thing I wanted to show you is some of the stuff that students have done. Do you guys want to see that? Yeah. Okay, now again, this I'd is not to be intimidating. Everybody's always intimidated by this. And I'm like, don't be intimidated. These are kids that have been working on this for a couple of years. 
You know what I mean? You can't expect, you know, some kid in T-ball to be in the major leagues. You know what I mean? So you guys got to, you got to forgive yourself and give you a chance to, to be bad and suck and then get better from there. Does that make sense? I said that yesterday, but you got to, you got to get the stuff out now. And then if you're here to gestate, this is the college is the batter's box of life. You got to practice swinging and you got to do all this stuff. And then you got to go to the big leagues, but hold on. Let me go ahead. You want to see Melissa's work? Let me bring that down here. So like I said, Melissa Caplione was a 2D artist. She did a bunch of classes with us and she did a bunch of illustration stuff at Heron. And then uh, in my class, the creature class, and again, we have, it's not intro and advanced. It's spring creature and it's summer creature. They're two different classes. They have two different kind of motifs. So let me go ahead and bring this up here. But again, this shows a lot of what we've done here. Just say, uh, give me a second. Hold on. As soon as I hit that, yep. As soon as I hit that button. All right. I just lost you guys. Hang in there. This is really annoying when it does this. So what's happening here is that when you hit PowerPoint with Zoom, it likes to get rid of the Zoom. Okay. Let me move you over here. Okay. All right. Let's go back here. Now, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. So again, this is, this is after several years of working. All right, can you guys see that there? Can you see the cantabile? And by the yeah. way, she was she's Italian, so everything she everything she names is a real Italian feel. This is the cantabile. You know, you gotta say it with an accent. So this right here is Melissa Caplione. So first off, she did she didn't know where she wanted to go. Can you guys see this okay? So she mm -hmm. we do an assignment called silhouettes because um, I, Devin, what, okay, I know Quentin's working on a sci-fi alien musical, which I want to see at some point, Quentin. So <laughs> if you need one-on-one, uh, -on -one, let me know. I know the Grays personally. We can talk. We can go over stuff. Devin, Maddie, uh, what do you guys like to do? What are you guys coming in for? Um, well, I kind of just have like a massive catalog of like Pokemon-inspired characters. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what to do with them yet, but oh. that's a lot of fun. Oh, God. So. Okay. All right. Okay. You and I got to talk too. We got a lot of stuff. I mean, one of the assignments in class is to make your own Pokemon. So, I already, yeah, I already have a whole bunch. I'm serious. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody goes nuts for Pokemon, and it really is a challenge to make a creature that goes from A, B, C. You know, I, mean, I always do make a three-part evolution like Venusaur, you know. And uh, we basically, you guys are Ivysaurs. You've been, college is Bulbasaur, <laughs> college is Ivysaur, life is, is Venusaur. You know what I mean? Sorry, Bulbasaur, Ivy, Venusaur. Sorry, we got mixed up. So you got that. Maddie, what are you looking at doing here? What are you looking at here? Um, I'm hoping to go into story writing and character design. So designing. Well, okay, well, great. Well, see, if you were in this class, there's a category called storytelling. So you don't have to draw or do anything. You just have to do like, see, so if Quentin and Devin were in the class, then they would have to do like a drawing or a character or something and do like two or three pages of writing. You, on the other hand, would do like four or five or eight pages of writing. And then you would tell us your story. You know what I mean? You would bring your story to life. You do like a little sketch. And then you bring the story to life. And then, uh, Lynn, uh, Lynn, what are you doing other than cats? If something pops up in chat, let me know, Taylor. But, Lynn, are you doing anything close to this? And we wait. We'll fix this in post. Okay, if anything comes in, let me know. But so, again, so for all three, four of you guys here, you see this right here? This is called silhouetting. This is a professional technique where people, because, again, what's scarier than anything else? The white canvas, right? The white canvas, the whole blank. So what we do in the class is we do, first off, we start with silhouettes. You just take ink and you just take crayons and markers and you just go nuts. And the reason we do this, to give you an example, is has everybody seen Pacific Rim by Guillermo del Toro and the Kaiju? Okay, so del Toro, before he did any of the Kaiju, okay, he had his artists for like two or three months do nothing but several hundred silhouettes. Because he said, if the silhouette is not interesting, then the creature isn't gonna be interesting. So can you imagine getting paid full time to sit there and just silhouette creatures. I love it. You know what I mean? That's what they do. They do. They did that for uh, Avatar the movie. They've done that for other creatures, Avatar the Last Airbender. They get out there and they silhouette it. So they just do these random shapes, one, to get loose, to two, fight the white canvas, and three, just to see what's out there. So when, so these are just two of the silhouettes that Melissa did. And she liked this one and she liked this one, you see? So she kind of did a mix back and forth. So then from that, let me click on this. She did this. So this is the profile of the anatomy. We look at anatomy. So you can see she, it's got a snooter, official, excuse me, official snooter. We've got string antenna. I know this is a giant Arctic creature. So then she studied the top and the bottom views to get an idea. And then here's the creature in its entirety. What do you guys think about that? That's awesome. I love that. 
Now, again, so now Quentin, see, if you were in class, I'd be like, okay, Quentin, expand upon that because in college we critique. So you have an initial positive reaction. Can you do a deeper dive and say, what about it? Is it the color, the shape, the exact, what kind? And again, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but, and if you don't like it, you have to articulate because in my classes, we do these reviews where you fill out review sheets and you say, you rate it and then you say why you rate it. So Quentin, not to put you on the spot, but can you just give me like, what is it that you like about it? What did you expand upon? Uh, I think every part of it um, is, it's different from your typical earth animal. Um, mm -hmm. Like uh, the tail is really striking because uh, like, what are those scales? It looks like a pine cone or something. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, I kind of want to know more about where this creature comes from and how it behaves. And I love the, I love the shapes of it. It's really appealing. It looks very exaggerated. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. See, that's the thing. If you, I always tell my, again, this, you, you know this, it's, it's not just, I like it, I hate it. It's like you start with that and then that's your thesis statement. Then you expand upon it. You know what I mean? So thank you. Right. Now, again, with this- I just this, don't want to talk too much. What? I just don't want to talk too much. Sorry. Oh, well, sorry. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I'm a talker and in our classes, we just talk all day. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But no, but I mean, I thank you for doing it. I really appreciate that because this is the first step in really understanding your own work and other people's work. And I like it because of the exposed ribs. It looks, it, you can relate to it, but you can't. And then the other thing, like you said, is like, you want to know more. You said a key phrase, I want to know more, right? So like, why are these claws different from these? Why are the ribs exposed? Why do you have this very heavy tail? Well, and I can tell you why. And by the way, just so you know, Melissa also was like, I just don't know if I can do this. I, you know, I self-doubt my own work. And if you guys have those feelings, don't worry, everybody does. But that's why we take a slow four or five year process to get this out. So she wanted to do a deep dive. So then she started studying anatomy, right? And then the important thing is that she did a size comparison. Now that probably changed it for you guys. I mean, and we always use a six foot human. The standard comparison is a six foot human, male or female or other identity, but a six foot human in person is what we use, okay? So that's a common thing in the industry. And then she did a scene. Now, mind you, this was her final project. This was her alpha, so to speak. And then if you can believe it, this is what's going on. So what this creature does is that these creatures are intelligent they have these exposed ribs to actually help grip the snow, right? So they hold on to the snow, but when they wanna to talk to each other across the mountains, they will climb to the top of a mountain range. They will then take out strings from their antennae. They will lace them in between their ribs and then they will play themselves like a string instrument and like wolves howling from one pack to the other, they will send musical notes from one, from one mountainside to the other mountainside. Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna get teared up. <laughs> What do you guys How do you think? come Any, up with that stuff? What, what, sorry, Quentin, what? How do you come up with that stuff? That's well, that's amazing. what we do. Well, that we sit in class, like I just got done with Summer Creature, okay? So like in our classes, we will have, you know, we start off with some culture, I show some videos, and then I'll do a lecture, and then we spend the class analyzing, drawing, writing, talking, and we, we put it on an anvil, you know what I mean? So, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll pick on Devin. So Devin, I'll, uh, <laughs> Quentin's like, leave me alone. So Devin, like, if you have your Pokemon, we'll put your Pokemon on the anvil and we'll be like, okay, this is what we like, we don't like, this is what we think. And then it's up to you, Devin, to decide what to use and what not to use, because you guys have autonomy. Now, Maddie, let's say we have your writing. We would either pass out your writing to the class and they would read it, or you would read it out loud. And we would take a sample of it. We'd be like, well, I like this section, I like that section, I'm drawn to this, I'm not drawn to that. So we have a big critique system. So we have the culture, we have the lecture, we have previous examples, and then we have the anvil of critique, you know, the anvil of discussion, which is why the creature classes always take place in the really weird classroom at the end of the hall with the wheelie chairs, because we just wheel around and go into different groups and, you know, make, just talk about it. And then like with summer creature, with COVID and all the, you know, with all the issues, I was starting to have free classes on Fridays where we would just sit around and talk creatures. And heck, like I told you, a bunch of the kids from the classes have made their own Discord, so they're still doing it. You know what I mean? We try to create a community. I know I sound sappy, but we creatives, creatives like ourselves need to have a community where we are able to politely argue and discuss and go back and forth and have a safe place. I don't like saying safe space, but like a, like a, uh, uh, a sanctuary where you can agree and disagree and make each other better. You know what I mean? So that's one thing. So so that's one thing. You guys want to see some more, or what do you guys want to see here? I've got a, I've got a whole bunch of stuff I could show you. You want to see yeah, some of the I'd most like late? You want to see some of the latest work? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Let me bring. Let me see if I can bring this up. So Laura Ash, this is kind of yeah. This is okay. This is a good one. This is the Sith metric, 
And uh, hold on, let me show you this. So, so again, uh, Quentin and Devin, you guys. So Laura Ash is one of, uh, is a great student. It been a little bit shy about her work, but she's working through it. She's great and getting out there. And she's had a bunch of creatures called the Scylla, which are these really kind of fun anime, cutesy, really uh, Neopets like psychic cat creatures. And so she's had this world forever, but then she took the creature class to expand upon it. So to give you an idea about this one, let me share the screen here just as, and I'll just keep this as best as I can, just a second. So can you guys see that? So yep. what, in the class, she, she can't do Scylla because Scylla look like, look like uh, this. So that, like, that's a Scylla, see that? Mm -hmm. Now the assignment was to show us something that we'd never seen before and something that you're emotionally invested in. So she's emotionally invested in the Scylla. So she did a bunch of different Scyllas. And again, they live on a rocky planet. They have levitation, they're magical. You see their moon eyes, they're, they're sentient. They make their own jewelry and stuff. So this was a real challenge for her. So she worked on this creature called the Sith Metric because I asked her and we talked about it as a class, like, okay, where do these guys get their jewelry? Where do these guys, see there's a six foot human male. Where do these guys get this stuff? And she was challenged by it. So after much talking, she came up with this creature called the Sith Metric. And what these guys do, these are cave creatures and they have this large frill. And what they do is they move around on the bottom of the cave. And as they eat and process stuff, they actually will fill this air sac with special chemicals and lighter than air gases. It also acts as a waste and poison regulator. So they'll eat the rocks, they'll eat the stuff from the cave. The sac will process the waste, process the poisons and then save the gas behind, right? Then when they get big enough, they will actually float to the top of the cave. Their, their crystalline silicon based anatomy will then merge with the cave wall. So the whole cave wall is just thousands of generations of Sith metrics. And then they hatch out of this thing and they'll molt and then they get, you know, they get to keep growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the Scylla will then use them to get gems and jewels. They won't kill them, but they use them to harvest gems and jewels. There'll be some gems and jewels left inside the carcasses here. And here's what I love too, is that look, here's the wild version, here's the domesticated version. So the head frill that covers the sack is smaller because they don't need the protection. And then just like what we did with cows, the Xyla have made the gas sacks bigger so these guys can help make more jewels. You see what I mean? So, and she was nervous doing this. And then look, there's a sexual dimorphism. And if you don't know that sexual dimorphism is the difference in males and females, but you know, you know how male mammal, mammal ma male mammals are generally bigger than female mammals, but in the arachnid or the fish world, the females are bigger than the males. So here you got the male pattern, the female pattern. And then you've got, you know, you've got, uh, this is where everybody, this is where the Scylla live. And then we do these field guide entries, which look like pages in a book because one of these days I'll put this together. So here's all the information. It's kind of burned. It looks kind of put together. And, you know, so, so it, we try to create this sense of realism. You see that? So I just love the fact that she, she went be, she, she's a great artist and she's been working for years and she's used to this work right here, but this really pushed her because we, we, she did tons of silhouettes. We had tons of critiques. She went back and forth on things and you know, there you go you know, there it was, it was a different, unique kind of experience. Does that make sense to everybody? So that was one thing. So I'm trying to, any questions on that right now? I mean, I'm gonna to try to pull up a 3D thing here. Any, anything uh, on that? I have a question, yeah. Yeah, Quentin, go ahead, anytime, what do you got? Um, when we're doing assignments like that, are we required to like come up with a new creature or we can't, can we use creatures we've already made and develop on them because I have like creatures I've already made, but I also have entire planets that they're from that I want to yeah. fill out and I can make more creatures for that. So. Well, we, we look at it as a, by, uh, a case by case basis. The general rule is for you to try to make some new creatures, you know, stuff mm -hmm. you haven't done before to really challenge you. But if you're coming in with your own world and stuff, like I've had a lot of students that have this sort of thing. I'm like, okay, great. You know, show us your world, show us your creatures, but then pick a new region, pick a new biome, pick a mountain, pick a swamp and make a new section of your world, which most people are kind of like, eh. But then once they do it, it 99% they're like, well, I just expanded my own world and I discovered in my head something brand new, you know? And so like Maddie with you, you know, I'll be like, okay, Maddie, I want eight pages on this creature and I want to know it's reproduction. I want to know it's holidays. I want to know it's internal physiology. I want to read you know, some, and some people don't like that. So some people will do an interview with the creature. They will do a myth. One time, 
a guy named John did a giant 12 page epic poem in a Viking style. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lynn, I think it's, yeah, go ahead and turn on your mic. That's great. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, so Maddie, I don't know what you're wanting to explore, but you could explore, you know, are there interactions? What are their personalities? What are they, you know, how would they interact with humans? So Quentin, to answer your question, yeah, you know, if you want to expand upon your world, we would, we would work with you on that. Maddie, if you want to, you know, Maddie, is there any areas with your writing that you'd like to explore or you feel like you haven't explored with characters, character design, that sort of thing? I've actually taken some classes for creative writing, so I know a bit about that, and I've been working on some stories, but I want to get more to, like, alien stuff, because I haven't really dove into that. I've done a lot of stories based off of um, mythology and mm -hmm. mythical creatures and whatnot, but I haven't really done anything sci-fi based, so... Mm -hmm doing something like that would well see that'd be good so you could actually write you could either do like a scp report where it's really kind of dry but informational or you could do one time we had a student like i said do a conversation between the human and the creature and they were just sitting and talking and they were exploring each other and how do you eat and what do you do it was like a first contact situation and it was really good one time we even had a student do a reenactment of like an alien like it was he put on a play he actually wrote a script and then performed it in class and he performed all the parts. His name was Cody Meyer and he played the scientist, the alien, uh, the security guard. And we were at Noodles and Company in the back room and it was an amazing performance. You know, so that would be, so Maddie, we would work with you and see what you think. Now, Devin, I mean, you're doing, what would you want to work on? I mean, you've got Pokemon. Are you wanting to make characters for a game? Because one thing I'll say is that we've had a lot of students that will make, like Tim, Tim Wilson, a couple of years ago, made a bunch of 3D characters, but then he turned them into D&D &D creatures and Pathfinder creatures. He added stats, he added lore, he added, you know, hit ratios, uh, you, know, all, you know, area of effect. He did that sort of thing because he wanted to make game characters and a bestiary. So what, what are you kind of curious with the Pokemon thing? Um, well, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't want to like make like a game, like basically just like Pokemon. Maybe yeah. I'd want to make like some kind of like TV series exploring my world. I don't know. Like no, that. no, but well, that'd be good too. See, I mean, there's, you know, there's stuff on there like Troll Hunters and, you know, Last Ab you know, last Airbender, and they really do a good job of bringing creatures in. And, you know, remember the, ba the bear from Ba Sing Sang, the only <laughs> normal creature there? You know, I mean, and, and other creatures, you know, like things on, you know, like, uh, what is it? Oh, I'm trying to think like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and things like that from back in the day. You know, they need creatures that are, and like Star Trek. Now, again, I have a problem with Star Trek because everything's a human, but, the, you know, it's got a little bit here and there, a little bit different, but they really work well when they deal with creatures that are not, you know, they're not, they're a little bit more exotic, you know, because it's expanding your animation. Okay. Oh, hi. Is it Lynn? It's, <laughs> my real name's Megan. I forgot to change my name. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, say that again. What's your real name? Sorry. What I miss? What? Megan. Megan. Okay. Sorry. I just see Lynn. So, okay. Megan, good to see it's you. It's Lynn. I got to change it. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's okay. You should see what the kids do during the summer camps. It's really, they put their names backwards. They put in words that I can't even say. They changed that one class I walked in and everybody had changed their name to just me. So I'm like, stop it. I know all their names and they're all like me, 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 me. And then they started doing me too and me not me this. And yeah, we got a lot of pranksters, but uh, well, Devin, thank you again. And then uh, Megan, you got anything here? You get work, you any questions, comments about this? Um, I mean, I, I'm actually, I'm more from an idea that had recently kind of happened. I'm kind of wanting to create a game to where it kind of, describes maybe certain issues that maybe someone's going through yeah. or like the emotions because i know everyone's like certain life situations are different and i kind of yeah. want to make it to where it's easier to understand from that person's perspective oh no it's great oh no it's awesome we've had a bunch of things like that i'll give you an example michael balaviscus was one of our students he was a creature capstone student now michael is an amazing guy but he was born with severe cancer behind his left eye okay as a child and it deformed, it didn't deform him, but it caused his head to be, you know, a little bit different. It caused him to grow and stuff like that. And he was at Riley for a long time. And he's wrestled with this issue for a very long time. So what he found in the creature class was therapy. He actually made, for his capstone, he made a book, and I wish I had it, but he made a book, he published a book, 
and in there he had a flow chart of all the good and bad things that happened to him with the cancer you know the pain the chemotherapy the friendship the hope the love and he turned him into a series of physical creatures so they were like real alien creatures but he made one based on the cancer one based on the fact that everybody stared at him one of the one of the creatures was based on hope you know what i mean it was it was an amazing amazing thing and then i had another student john who is trans and he used the class to explore his transition. And so he actually, and see, we have an assignment called hybrid, where you take two creatures and you put them together. So the assignment is, can I see the original two parent creatures in a third creature, but can I see the third creature on its own? It's kind of like you guys, right? You look like your parents, but you don't look like your parents or stuff like that. So what he did was he combined a polar bear with a blood fungus. So you had this oh, big wow. hair-like creature that was had these big, have you ever seen a blood fungus? It, it releases its spores by dripping out like what looks like a strawberry jelly. And so you had this big polar bear creature that was half fungus and had like these big red spots that were producing jelly. And he said that that was what he felt during his transition. He felt like he was kind of a, a big creature that was kind of, you know, had, it was kind of, uh, I mean, I don't want to speak out of turn, but he felt some pain, but he kept moving. So the creature kept moving forward, but it still felt pain and it felt all these different emotions. And so we were all just sitting in class like, wow, that is deep. And he said he found it therapeutic. So I'm not an, I'm not a therapist, but you know, it was amazing to think that these kids do this. And then there's another guy, if you bring that up, have you ever seen the work? Let me bring this up here just a second for you guys here. Where is it here? Just, sorry, one second. There was an artist, and we look at this, Toby Allen, I believe is his name, uh, Emotional Creatures. Because you know how creatures can represent different things? Well, Toby Allen got really famous a couple of years ago because of this. His name is Zesty. And let me go ahead and turn this over to you guys. So, uh, Megan, this might be right up your alley. And for some of you guys, this might be there too. So we look at all kinds of things, you know, spiritual, metaphysical, interdimensional. We also look at a lot of, you know, quantum and science. Oh, stuff. So you I've seen, seen this right their here? art before. What? I've seen their art before on a YouTube video. It was a really long time ago, though. Oh, yeah. No, he's still doing it. So, like, what he did was he, oh. suffer, he suffers from what I just, I mean, I don't call them disabilities, but we all have mental conditions, especially if you're creative. So, what he did to gain control over his situations is he started to draw them. So, this is anxiety. You see that? And then here's, here's depression. Let's go ahead and see. So depression is big, it's heavy, it floats above you, you know, it kind of hides. And then he talks about, you know, how it acts and interacts. And, he, and, then, and then people started asking him to do their conditions. So avoidant personality disorder, you've got paranoia, you know, you've got schizophrenia, you've got social anxiety. Look at that. It's looking away. It's got the big scales. It's protecting itself. You guys see that? that? Anybody, anybody relate to these? An armadillo. Wait, what, what, Megan? It reminds me of like an armadillo a little bit. Oh, yeah. It kind of looks, have you ever seen a pangolin from Africa? It looks like that too. It looks like, and then look, obsessive compulsion, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. You see how we've got like the wounds in there. And so even though this may be a little bit, you know, this may be very serious, but the thing is, is that this has really helped a lot of people. And this is the sort of thing that inspired Michael to really work and take control. Because if you can physically like write or draw or 3D or put into, put into solid, in, into a solid physical form, excuse me, certain situations, you know, then, then you can, you can get a control instead of being amorphic, you can get control over the thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's the thing about it too. But then there, but again, also there's fun stuff too here. Okay. Hold on. Let me, let me show you some stuff here too, real quick. So let me see. Uh, let me show you some fun stuff here. First off, you guys want to see a sound one. Hmm. So mm -hmm. let me show you this here. Let okay. me show you this. All right. So let's see if I can get this to work. Okay. So, all right. You see this? So this is by a student named Laura. And Laura is a sound student. She wants to go into sound design. She's what I was talking about. So she did a rough sketch of the Zetelac. Now she's like, I'm no artist, I'm no artist. But I'm like, okay, just do a sketch. So she did a little sketch. And then she actually worked on, let's see if I can get this. So she did feeding time, training day, and the floor is lava. So she made three sound effects to make the creature come to life audio-wise. You guys want to hear these? Yeah. Okay, okay, here we go. Yeah. So here's feeding time. So this is... In order to protect the planet, the Zetilex and the mining companies, each company uh, started importing their own special combination of rocks and minerals. Uh, so this is the sound of the creature, which is this right here, feeding. Let's see if I get this to work. Okay, hold on. Come on. Can you guys did you hear that okay? screen with sound? 
What? Did you share your screen with sound? Uh, yeah, I thought I did. Did it not come through? No. No, I heard it. You it heard was quiet, it? but I heard it. Yeah. Okay, well, let me see if I can turn up my volume and I'll be really quiet. And hell, I'll just put my microphone next to the computer a little bit more. Hold on. Let me do the next one. Here's training day. Let's see if I can do this here. Let's try this one. And then, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Taylor, uh, Taylor, I've got the sound jacked up and at least Quentin heard it, right? So, okay, well, hold on. Let's see. If, let's try this one. Oh, yeah. that's the same one. Let me do training day just a second. See, so that one was actually a trainer training the creature to do different things. And then this one here, the floor is lava. Yeah, this is an elder Zetilax actually uh, talking. Let's see if I can do this. Warning about lava. Here we go. So, okay, so what do you guys think of that? Anybody? What, what, that one you... was actually pretty neat. It sounded kind of like a beacon going a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, well, she wanted it to be like that creature supposedly telling the rest of the clan, the tribe, hey, here's what's going on. And, and Laura is amazing because she like uses whale sounds. She has a bunch of Foley work. She does her own voice. She has like glasses and she just has all this stuff in her, in her house, apartment, dorm, wherever she works, where she just works all the time on stuff, you know? So again, I'm trying to show you guys Oh, I know what I could show. Okay, I got to show you this one. Hold on, let's see if this is. Oh yeah. Okay, you want to see it? You want to see one of the cutest things we ever had this season? Okay, so this is my Dawson. Dawson and I get along because he has seven sugar gliders, and I just have the two. See, normally in the creature classes, yeah, Taylor's gonna be like, "What?" But in the classes, we've uh, it, we have a pet-friendly program. So one time in class, we had two rats. Lumos and um, there was light and dark. We had a python. We had hissing cockroaches, a basilisk. We've, <laughs> we've had everything in class and then sugar gliders. So this is done by Dawson. This is the, this is the Sana Lin Maxim here. And this is, uh, again, so this one, he wanted to create a creature that would really draw people in. You see that? So here's the sluggy pup. You guys see that? Look at that. Look at that. Very attractive. Isn't that fun? Now see, it's alien, but it's still, you just want to hug it. I want a plushie. What do you guys think? It makes me think of an alien dog. See, there you go. Yes. Yeah, now look, these guys are actually on an alien planet. So like, Quentin, you said you had sentient species. So these guys are on a planet with a sentient species. They live on one island with no predators and they are used because their slime actually acts like a uh, it, it's not a drug, but it acts like a medicine to help cure depression and other things, right? So mm -hmm. here's, this is the baby. Here's the adult version, okay? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, and then here's the, here's the parent and the child. And Dawson, like I said, if I could, I try to inspire you guys to do more work, because if you get into it, you love it. Like Dawson, you start, look, there's the six foot human female. And then look, here's the internal physiology. They don't have bones, so they have cartilage. And then here's all the different variations. Oh, I love the blue one. Yeah, and do you know what? You know how this came to be? We were sitting in class, and Dawson was sharing his screen, right? So he had the creature in Photoshop. So he was just going through and messing with the colors, and everybody in class could not pick their favorite color. And <laughs> I and the TAs were like, just do them all. Just make a copy of all. Just change the color, <laughs> save it out. Change the color, save it out. You know, so that's what Dawson did. Dawson, and again, Dawson had like 20 of these, but he only put six in there. But, and again, this is about appealing to different people. And then look, oh my God, look, it's eating the leaf. Nom, 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 nom. I realized that the one with like the six different colors, yeah. like the one in the bottom middle, it looks like mint chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> see, there you go. It's like 31 flavors. It's great. See, and then look, and then look, now see, again, this also, it also acts as a wound. So here's a human. And then look, you have a wound, you put the slime on there, it scabs over, and then look at this, it leaves a golden scar behind. You see that? Ooh, that is so cool. Yeah, and then finally, <laughs> as you can see here, uh, we've got the creature in its environment, the sluggy, relaxing with the slime, and then here's the field guide entry. And then here is, and again, one thing we do, guys, I'll warn you, the school's really big on publication. So everybody in my class has to do a public uh, publishing other things somewhere. Now, again, you could do it on Twitter, Snapchat, 
Instagram, Facebook, and one person even didn't like any of that, so they just, I forget who it was, but they made a poster of their creature and nailed it to a telephone pole and took a picture of it, and I said, okay, fine, that counts. Well, at least it was one way. <laughs> well, yeah, it's public. So that, you know, that was, you know, that's one thing right there. And Matt, uh, uh, Maddie, I'm trying to find a really nice, well, for some of you guys, I'm trying to find a nice 3D one, and I'm trying to find, because uh, you guys are probably concerned about the 3D and the storytelling, right? I'm 2D. What? Got an interest in 3D. Yeah, I'm no, I'm trying, to find, I'm trying to show a good, I'm trying to, I've got a ton of examples. I'm trying to find one that is really good here, just a second. I'm trying to find one that's, because again, I just want to show you all the different examples we've got. So, okay, I don't have, uh, this is why I want everybody to do, so just a second, let me bring this up here. So let me show you this real quick. So these, Dustin, uh, Dustin Judd is a 3D student, and this was his spaceborne creature. You see these? So these are 3D renders. So he did this big kind of like jellyfish creature, and this is probably the best one. So he made this in Maya, he textured it, and then we have had students make creatures with the tilt brush and people that have put it in VR. So do you guys see that one there? So oh, that, wow. that's what oh wow <laughs> you like is that good yeah so again now mind you guys look this is after two or three years of working so don't be put off i want you guys to think about this as something you reach for you get all the basic stuff in freshman year you start talking to people you start going into sophomore year sophomore junior year you start working on this stuff you see that now the next thing here real quick let me see all right maddie you're a storyteller i'm gonna get maddie up next okay where is the storytelling people all right hold on Manuel Fernandez was nuts about this. Okay, hold on, let's see. I'll so, give our five minute warning to the end of the Okay, sorry, okay, real quick, okay, real quick here. Okay, let me, okay, let me bring this up here. Maddie, this goes out to you. Okay, here we go. So now Manuel is really aggravating because Manuel is a storyteller, okay? And so Manuel, uh, you can see here, Manuel did a story about these creatures here. Hold on just a second. So see, I mean, he wrote, Okay, hold on, let me, let me enable that. Can you guys all see this? So he was supposed to do four pages and he wrote six pages of text about the creature, okay? Look at that. Well, and Maddie, Maddie, I love that face. I can't read that face at all. But the point is, is that then he turned it into a PowerPoint and the thing was is that he started to, actually he was a storyteller and for the first time ever, he started to work with uh, you know 2D stuff. So he started off small and this is like some of the first 2D stuff he's ever worked on. But his PowerPoint presentation is he read this to the class and he had us read this, all these great quotes about, you know, his creature. And then he, saw, then he started working with this stuff. And then he did the field guide, which he was very nervous about. But like I said, the majority of his work was all the stuff from there. So he did these great readings and great work there. So again, are we really done with the hour, Taylor? I thought we had four hours on this. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, but I, I could show you so much more. I wish I could show you some of the professional stuff. Like we look at people like Wayne Douglas Barlow, who made the creatures for uh, Pacific Rim and Avatar. We look at Terrell Whitlatch, who did all the creatures for Star Wars. We look at Bryn Metheny, who is another creature creator, because there is professional stuff out there. And even if you guys don't go on to be creature people, the thing is, is that I try to make this class applicable for you to go off and do stories, work in the industry, you know, TV, movie, websites, video games, you know, whatever kind of thing out there. If you, and even if you work with humanoid characters, it's a chance for you to make stories and to explore new things so you can get a job and say, hey, look, I, you know, to really, I like tell people, dig at the bottom of your creative barrel and make it and again. And here's my, the reason I got into this is real quick about me. I've been drawing aliens and creatures my whole life. I'm doing a personal passion project, which is one of the things I tell people, I go, look, if you can show an employer that you did this without a job telling you to do it, they will hire you. I almost got a job at Insomniac Games, you know, that do Ratchet and Clank. Cause right now I'm on my fifth book. And right now I have 4,368 individual alien creatures. And uh, I have an Instagram and stuff like that. So then I write the stories, the subspecies, different genders, different evolutions. And I went to the guy and I said, here's my book and here's my several thousand creatures. And he goes, guess what, buddy? I like your stuff, but you're very narrow. He goes, you come back next year and you have a book of a thousand. He goes, I want a thousand creatures, thousand plants, thousand buildings, thousand weapons, and a thousand spells. And I'll hire you on the spot. He goes, you're good, but you're not like really good, but your tenacity, I want to hire a guy like that. And then I didn't go back because I got the job teaching. 
but you know what I mean? So that's the thing. So I, I, I found a way to work with myself and others and explore myself. And I've just found a way to accept others and explore nature and see all these things. And it just goes on to help you find more creative stuff in yourself, dig deep. And then you can use that to try to get a job because who here wants to sit behind a cubicle? Anybody? That's why you're here, right? You're here to sit behind a cubicle like an office space. No, you're not. You're here to be creative and work. You guys all know Steam and Valve or Valve. You know, Valve, their offices, they have desks, they have wheels on their desks so they can wheel back and forth and creatively collaborate and they'll come together. And then when they're sick of each other, they wheel away. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's what we want to do, you know? And then we've had people, we have, uh, we had, uh, we had, and people can take my classes multiple times. And there's different levels. You're a crawly pog, then a Zarga tween, and then an elder corn. And this year we had a couple of Zarga tweens that said, hey, we don't want to do the same assignment. So Nicole and Hannah did an exquisite beast. So one, one student would draw a creature and then the next student would draw it a little bit different and evolve it. And then that creature would go to the next student. So they did 20 creatures. They did 10 creatures each. And it was like, it showed this evolution all the way through the thing. It was just awesome as heck. So anyway, I'll shut up. I know, I know, time, I know. My steampunk watch is going off. So, but real quick, we got like two minutes. Uh, hopefully you have some kind of questions. If not, make something up. Um, I don't have a question, but uh, I just want to let you know that I'm sitting here trying to contain my excitement because I want to be in this class right now. Oh, oh, I'm honored. I'm, well, I see, that's a, that's really exciting. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, see, that's the thing. Again, I do get hyper, but I'll tell you right now, guys, one of the things we have is like, we're like pretzel ladies at the mall. Try a sample, try a sample. If you guys want to sit in a class before you're eligible for it, contact the teacher, say, hey, I want to sit in for a tour day. Angela and Taylor, oh look, Angela's clapping. Angela and Taylor will set it up or email me. I have, we have cameos. I have grads and alumni that come back and sit in the class. What, during the creature critiques in the summer, I sent out emails to everybody. We had like 30 people in school, out of school, critiquing, talking. So Quentin, everybody else, uh, Megan, if you want to jump in the class and test it out, all of us at Media Art Science are like, come on by for a day, sit in the class, join us, and then see what you see if you like it or not. And then, uh, you know, you come back in a year or two and you take the class for real. So, yeah, so that's one thing we do. Because, I mean, it, look, I mean, it's like a buffet. I want you to know what you're, I want you to sample before you really sit down and have a meal. You know what I mean? So that's mm -hmm. what we try to do. So, I don't know. Devin, uh, Maddie, you got anything? Uh, you guys got anything? No? Uh, I'm just... I'm just really excited as well. Okay, well, well, I'm very, I'm very humbled and I'm very honored. So now I will tell you that one thing I want to say: I do try to make it exciting, but don't forget, guys, it's hard work. I do expect you guys to work on this stuff. That's the other thing. We try to make it fun and exciting, but then at the same time, you got to sit down at night and draw and write and 3D and get it done. You know what I mean? Not to be, not to kill the buzz, but the point is, is don't forget, it's hard, fun work. That's what you got to do, and you got to make it fun. That is my definition of fun. <laughs> What, what Sorry thing? to cut you off. I was just, that is my definition of fun. I don't know about the others, but I, that's all I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's great. Well, that's what we do. I mean, you got to have fun and you got to work and you got to find a balance. And I don't know, not every class is like this. You know, some classes are a little bit harder. Some classes are a little bit easier. You're just going to navigate. You're going to have a whole different buffet of professors and TAs and adjuncts and people and staff and admins and stuff like that. So college is also about just navigating your way through everybody and everything. I mean, look at Taylor. You got to navigate your way through that building if we ever get back into it. So, <laughs> so, all right. Well, I know we're out of time, but any other last minute questions or concerns or anything? Taylor, Angela, anything? I don't know. It just. No, I don't think so. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, I think this has been one of my favorite sessions we've done so far this summer. Okay. Um, and as you all know, we're doing a bunch more of these throughout July. So I hope to see you all again. Yeah. And oh, by the way, I've learned from my students. Uh, here we go. K-pop. I know we used to do this and now we do this, right? We're doing this, right? That's the thing. I'm hip. I know the stuff. Yes. So <laughs> Taylor, that's uh, that's K-pop for we love you deep in our hearts. So yes, there you go. Yeah. It's, I learned it's something new today. Yeah, it's BTS, right? <laughs> BTS does that. I'm trying to, we have a lot of Pokemon, World of Warcraft, Pokemon, and K-pop fans. So just be ready for that culture, guys. <laughs> so, but no, thank you, Angela, Taylor, uh, Megan, Maddie, Devin, Quentin. Thank you all. And uh, hopefully I'll see you. Now, again, with COVID, if you can't come to the classroom, uh, Taylor, Angela, if you guys want, I can send out, you know, Zoom links. If you want to Zoom into a class, let me know. Because this fall, we're doing game one, game three, uh, comic book one, game prototyping. So if you want to do that, we'll, we, same thing, just Zoom in. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, so. we'll figure it out. Okay, cool. All right. Well, you guys have a great day. Enjoy yourselves and uh, welcome. So, mm -hmm. all right. Thank you. See y'all.